Hi, I'm Sheldon Zwirling here on a partly sunny day in early June. In March of this year, 2011, with Rob Hirsch on camera, I interviewed my friend George Thomas. George Thomas and Rob and myself were all members of the theatrical union IATSE, and we all work through IA Local 15 here in Seattle. When I interviewed George in March, it was during a rather tumultuous time for the American labor movement as collective bargaining rights were being challenged in Madison, Wisconsin in particular, and other state capitals around the country. And we recognize as union members that there's going to be increased challenges to meet in the future. We also feel, feel that there's a value in looking back. Well, George has been in the entertainment industry for over 50 years. He's been a member of our union for 46. We'd like to share our conversation with George with you. My start was in high school. Our high school just got a brand new whole high school and part of it was a brand new auditorium and uh, I became enthralled with that idea and watched the equipment go in and, and uh, a couple of my friends and I would sneak into the little theater at lunchtime in the dark, before the lighting was finished, before the electrical was finished, and uh, eat our lunch in there and then go back into the classrooms. One day we were in there and the, and the door opened and, and the guy came in with a flashlight and he found that he came over and turned the lights on and the two guys I was with ran away, but I got up and ran and I fell over a box, what, what turned out to be uh, light bulbs that hadn't been installed yet and cracked several bulbs and the guy caught me but the other two guys got away. <laughs> it turned out to be Terry Carroll and his name is Rat Carroll and um, he, he's sort of like a John Hudson kind of figure now if I could compare him to anybody. John Hudson being a member he, up here in, one of in our Washington. Here in Seattle. So he said well I'll give you two choices. You, I'll either take you down to the principal's office and turn you in or you can come in and help me uh, and be a, like an apprentice to me on Saturday morning. And I said, well, I'll come here Saturday morning. <laughs> and where was the location it's, of this? This is in Beloit, Beloit uh, Wisconsin. Uh -huh. Beloit, Wisconsin, yeah. This is uh, interesting because I'd heard this before from George mm -hmm. about where he got his start. And Beloit is about 52 miles from Madison where, right. of course, in this middle of March 2011, there's been such a, uh, uh, a ruckus about collective bargaining rights. So I decided to come in and help him wire the, it turned out to be he was finishing up the wiring of the switchboard, which is a direct drive, direct to control switchboard. And I learned a lot about uh, the way the lighting system worked and all the colors and it was just enthralling all the switches and everything. This is way pre-computerized uh, lighting. Mm -hmm. So I came, went in that Saturday and the subsequent six Saturdays after that because I was so interested in it. Then the rigger came in and I got involved watching the rigger install the, the counterweight system and uh, ultimately became the uh, what they called the stage manager of the auditorium and I spent more time in that theater than I did in classes in high school but uh, I was a band captain of the band at the same time and and uh, so that's where I started theater in uh, from then I went to uh, college my brother was in, in theater, and I was going to be pre-med in college. And my roommate got sick one day, and uh, he said he was a lighting board operator at the, uh, the theater at Scoville Hall, and he said, you got to go over and sub for me if you can. He was throwing up and everything. Mm -hmm. so, so I went over, and I ran the board and uh, did the... And the director was impressed <laughs> that I could even follow the script. And... Uh, and so subsequently after that, and a year from that, I changed my major from pre-med to uh, theater to drama. So I've, ever since then, I was 19, uh, 50, I graduated in 57, so that must have been in uh, 55, something like that. And where was Scoville Hall Scoville at? Scoville Hall was at Beloit College in Beloit, Wisconsin. Uh -huh. I went to school in the same town I uh, lived in. The Wagon Wheel Theater had an opening down in Rockton, Illinois. It was a winter stock theater, and I went down there and got a job at the Wagon Wheel as their uh, builder, set builder, and I became an actor. We did everything, lighting and acting, and it was, you know, stock is stock. And then uh, I was there about a year, and then the director of theaters at the college needed an, uh, a technical director, and so they hired me back to the college as an instructor, and I became a, an instructor at Beloit College for the next two years. and. Um, 
uh, who was there. And then uh, the president of the college, Miller Upton, was kind enough to urge me on into graduate school. So I came on out here from Wisconsin to, uh, to the University of Washington to come to graduate school. My field was lighting. My premise was to design a uh, method of pre-recorded lighting cues. This is pre-computerized lighting. Mm -hmm. So I was in. I had a radio show during high school too, and we used wire recorders. Tape recording had just begun to come on the online. I thought well, if we could use tape, we could pre-record uh, the cues on tape. But it was great, except there was no way of doing do it, doing it random. You couldn't select cues ahead or go into a cue and change it. So mm. it was it was fruitless. And then the World's Fair came on scene in 1962. Now we come to Local 15. Business agent's name was Floyd Hart, and he didn't like education very well. He thought all theater should be learned on, on the job practically. But he was, he was facing a dilemma with uh, having enough help to put the fair on. So he came out to the university and met with the technical guys that were there and said, asked if anybody was interested because the fair was coming up. And so I signed on. And, uh, one day after the fair started, I got a phone call, and, uh, and it was Floyd, and he said, uh, be at the Opera House at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. If, he didn't say if you could be there, he just said, <laughs> be there. <laughs> of course, I had classes and everything. I ended up taking a quarter off of school and working with the, uh, with the local 15. Um, started at, uh, with Aida at the, what was called the Opera House at that time. We call it McCaw Hall now. And, uh, and But re very shortly after that, uh, I went down to the Orpheum Theater with Don McDonald, Don McDonald Sr., who was, this, who was the head carpenter there. And I st spent most of my summer at the Orpheum with Don there, working in sound, most of the time in sound. And then Floyd um, was still shorthanded, so he put me in the Moore Theater and at the... Um, Orpheum at the same time. So I was a prop man at the Moor and a sound man at the Orpheum. Uh, and I'd start the Orpheum set up, I'd run up the alley and through the streets to the Moor and get that set up, and I'd run back to the. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted for a while till they found, till the management found out about it, because <laughs> I was on two payrolls.